This is our 65th anniversary season, which is uh, an incredible span of time, an incredible history uh, for an orchestra to build up its repertoire, to build up its community. Um, and in many ways, this is probably our most uh, challenging and rigorous season yet. The real theme this year is focusing on the virtuosity of the orchestra. For example, we have the Bartok Concerto for Orchestra. So instead of a single instrumentalist having a solo, the whole orchestra becomes the virtuosic uh, solo piece in the Concerto for Orchestra. Um, there's a really strong theme of this idea of darkness to light, uh, you know, of coming through the abyss a little bit scathed, a little bit worn, a little bit seasoned, uh, but triumphing nonetheless. Um, we have these great symphonies, uh, Gustav Mahler's Fifth Symphony, uh, Dmitry Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony, of course the Bartok Concerto for Orchestra, uh, Robert Schumann's Third Symphony, the Rhenish Symphony. We're playing the Arturo Marquez Danson Number no. 2, a really fun, uh, subtitled sort of the second uh, national anthem of Mexico, focusing on this dance in the Malinalco region in Mexico. We have Charles Ives' Decoration Day from his Holiday Symphony. Growing up in New England, he would hear a gathering on the town square, and then off to one side there's, a, there's maybe a Sousa marching band, and then off to another side there's you know, a bugle call uh, playing. Um, so Charles Ives basically wrote all of these different things into the, his pieces at the same time uh, to mimic what he was hearing growing up. We're going to do Sarah Kirkland Snyder's Something for the Dark, and that will go on the concert with uh, the Shostakovich Symphony No. 5 and the Beethoven Leonora Overture No. 3. It has this kind of political undertones themes about it. Beethoven, of course, wrote his opera Leonora or Fidelio, uh, and it was based on the freeing of political prisoners. Shostakovich, of course, who was working uh, you know, under the rule of, of Joseph Stalin. So the Fifth Symphony was written as a Soviet artist's justified response to criticism. So it's this really triumphant symphony, but, it, but in the end, um, it's really Shostakovich poking fun at Stalin. For our holiday concert, we have Rimsky-Korsakov, the Christmas Eve Suite, also a, a, a really kind of obscure piece by Ararino Respighi called Tritico Botticelliano, that's three pictures from Botticelli. This incredibly be beautiful uh, music uh, based on the Botticelli paintings that of course evokes uh, the moods and the spirits of the seasons. And also on the holiday concert, we'll be premiering uh, works from our previous composers in residence that the Rappo Phil's had over the past five years. Uh, one from Edgar Gertain and one from Jonathan Bingham. Uh, we also have a premiere from Elizabeth Ann Comden Ellis, uh, a really great composer who I've been working with in Colorado. For our Pops concert this year, we're really excited to feature Harry Potter and How to Train Your Dragon, and we have a very special uh, violin concerto by Eric Wolfgang Korngold. For the kids out there and the families, we have a very new family concert this year. I'm really excited about that. It'll be with music focusing around the idea of space. So pop music, classical music, and we will be talking about the music, we'll be giving trivia, there will be some activities for the kids and the entire family. For the kids concert this year, we're playing two really awesome staples of children's concert repertoire. We're going to be playing the Prokofiev Peter and the Wolf and the Sanson Carnival of the Animals, which will go through all the animals which, with some incredible stories, uh, which kids of all ages are going to enjoy. The Sinfonietta this season will be a collaboration with Brian Leatherman and the Cherry Creek Chorale, and we're really excited to play the Vivaldi Gloria in D and the John Rutter Requiem. And to add to that program, we're also having the Adagio for Strings by Samuel Barber and we're going to feature our principal trumpet, Anthony Zader. Our new composer in residence, which will be determined at the beginning of the season, will have the distinct pleasure of writing a premiere, a world premiere, along with Mahler's Fifth Symphony uh, for our season finale. And just to sort of encapsulate the entire season this year, uh, it's something that is claimed to be in, in the music of Gustav Mahler. When Mahler was writing, uh, he was an opera conductor turn composer, basically an opera conductor was his day job, and over the summers he, he spent time in his cabin and he wrote these enormous symphonies that he really, for the most part, didn't expect people would play after his death. But he claimed that his symphonies contained the entire world. And if I could encapsulate our season this year, 
um, with its plethora of symphonic richness and diversity and virtuosity, um, I would have to say that our season contains nothing less than the entire world.